Hey everybody! We're gonna make the big green monster today. Uh, my friend Jason gave me a really big hunk of black walnut back in October. Um, I sawed it in half and you can see I did a really lousy job um, as far as chainsawing it. <laughs> I think that it pushed the limits of my of my chainsaw. So um, I used some smaller Forstner bits to make so, sort of a flat spot and then used a three inch Forstner bit to make a spot for my um, face plate and then I just threw the level on it to see if I was going to get it kind of even. I'm trying to balance the sapwood out a little bit. Since this is such a huge piece the first thing I'm going to do is change the um, pulleys around on my lathe to put it in the lower um, gear setting so that I have some more torque. Um, I think that this is about 16 inches or so after I whacked a little bit off the ends to make it clear. Um, it's really out of balance. I didn't really do anything except knock the corners off. And um, it it beats the tar out of me here uh, until I get it round. There's an awful lot of material to get through. So I'm using my 5 8 bowl gouge with basically a fingernail grind on it just trying to knock some of the corners off and get it round and I'm going really slow. I think the lathe speed is probably only about 250 or so. And I decided to just go ahead and get rid of the bark with the air chisel. It's just one less thing I have to worry about flying off at me. When I'm roughing something out, especially something that's really pretty out of round, I really like to do that little pivot cut. I watched a video that Brian Havens put out and um, I really feel comfortable with that. I don't feel like um, I don't feel like there's a lot of potential for you know the gouge to get caught. Um, it's just a, a small little cut, but I find that it really is helpful to me and you know, being able to get it roughed out. And then when I get it close, I'll go ahead and do a push cut. I think that I've, yeah, here I've switched to my half inch 40-40 uh, gouge. Spaghetti strings. The front edge is still really rough um, because I, I did such a poor job with the chainsaw. I've got a couple of different levels on the front, so um, I'm just going to kind of leave those until later. So on this one I'm going to do a mortise, um, which I don't do very often, and I'm actually going to leave a foot in it. So I used my little homemade um, mortise and tenon sizing gauge, and um, I'm setting up the mortise to use my, I think the 100 millimeter jaws on my Nova. Uh, I've got the Supernova 2 chuck in there right now. Thank you. 
I didn't think to put the moisture meter in it before I started. I wish that I had, although I suppose I could go test the other half. But you can see um, when I'm cutting that it's wet and then it and then it dries pretty quickly. Um, it moved around kind of a lot as I'm um, as I'm working on it. That's my carbide shear scraper. I'm still really having a lot of trouble with um, with not getting a really smooth cut. I would have expected that here on the outside, while I still have um, you know all of the mass on the inside, that I would have been able to get a pretty smooth cut. Uh, I went back over it several times with the bowl gouge, um, trying to basically just make one you know one smooth pass, but uh, I run out of I run out of tool rust pretty quick, um, so this this bowl is going to be one that I keep because I started turning this at like 4:30 in the afternoon, um, and it had to get finished that night, uh, or it was you know probably going to be wasted. I I wanted to get it finished and hope that it doesn't crack. So I went back over with my skew um, as a negative rake scraper, trying to just clean up those lines a little bit. And I finally gave up because if I keep going, I'm going to end up with, you know, a micro bowl. And I decided I was just going to put a couple of little decorative grooves in there, partially to see what they're going to do uh, as they dry. You can see what a mess I've got going on the face of this. And you guys may not have been able to see it on the sped up video, but when I brought the tailstock up, it sat funny. And so when I turned the lathe on, it was making the, um, the tail center kind of go in a not completely concentric. So I backed it off and made a nice flat spot. Because I'm going to just once turn this and, and call it good, uh, I'm trying to get it as thin as I think that I can go. I think I have it at about a quarter, quarter of an inch out there at the rim. So the way that I'm hollowing this bowl out is um, the way that Stuart Batty and also Lyle Jameson and probably a bunch of other people um, talk about doing it. So you're basically cutting in from the top and you're cutting straight into the side grain rather than cutting across the end grain when you sweep from the rim all the way into the bottom of the bowl. It's supposed to just be a little bit easier on your body, a little bit easier turning because you're not going into the to the end grain. Um, so I pretty much do that through this whole process. You can see that I'm just basically going in from the center and making some clearance for the, um, I'm mostly using the 40-40 gouge on the inside of the bowl, making some clearance for that to stop without getting caught. And you can see how wet this is. Every part that I expose is dark and then within not too long it's pretty much dried out. Thank you. 
because this blank is so wet, I'm expecting that I'm going to have some lines on the inside um, of the bowl in particular. You know, I tried to do the very edge um, as thin and as clean a cut as I could get and then not come back, but I'm really bad at that. I always want to just go back and fix it, and that usually ends up making it worse. One day I'll learn that lesson. It's really kind of crazy watching the color change where I cut, how dark it goes. A couple of things I want to start looking at getting in the not too distant future is a coring system. You know, I could have gotten probably three nice bowls out of this blank and it all ended up on the floor. Um, so I, I may I may check into getting a, a coring system at some point. And I also want to get a hollowing system. I want to make some vases, taller hollow forms, and I really don't have um, the tools to, to hollow much deeper than, you know, six or seven inches. So here I'm using my diamond carbide tool to just go ahead and cut the rest of that core out. And I check the jaws on the chuck and make sure everything is still tight before I take the tailstock out. I did a reasonably good job of getting it even as far as thickness goes. I just have a really lousy surface left from tool marks and um, you know the the bowl kind of moving around as I'm as I'm working on it. So here I've switched, I think, to the 5 8 bottom bowl gouge, and I'm still, <laughs> I'm still practicing with this tool. The, um, the bevel angle is very different than any of the other tools that I have, and uh, I'm getting better. I, I do end up with a pretty nice flat bottom, um, but boy, that one is sure taking a lot of practice. I'm still not there. Something else that I've realized as I'm watching my own videos back um, is that I think that my lathe is a little bit too tall for me. Uh, when we set it up, one of the um, holes that the leveling feet go into, there was a burr or something, and I, I should have gotten a tap and, and cleaned it up. Um, so leveling this thing was kind of a nightmare. One of the, one of the feet was really... Um, not much fun. And I think that if it were probably just sitting on the floor, that it would be a little bit better height for me. I'm noticing that um, on all of my tools, but it's really most uh, of an issue, I guess, with the carbides, that everything is basically on an uphill angle. So my cutting edge on my carbides is not really horizontal. Uh, so that's probably not helping me with my you know, the smoothness of my cuts. At this point, it's like 9.30 at night, and um, 
I have to just get this bowl finished. Um, I did sand up through 320, but I did a real half-hearted um, version of sanding. Uh, it, it sanded okay considering it was wet, um, but because it was so wonky, I was already struggling with, you know, being able to keep the sandpaper, um, you know, touching the whole surface. So you can see I've got lots of lines in there. I'm using the Brad's finishing products here. This is the uh, abrasive paste. And then um, I'm going to use the tongue wax. I didn't know what to use on this bowl because it's so green. So I got a hold of Brad and asked him if, if he'd ever used this on, um, on Greenwood. And he said that he had. So I went ahead and used the abrasive paste and the tongue wax. And um, so far, I finished this bowl on... Tuesday. No, I finished this bowl on Monday, Monday night, and um, today's Thursday, and it hasn't cracked yet. It's uh, it's starting to go oval a little bit. It's starting to warp, but it's not cracking, so uh, I'm going to call that a win. I forgot to mention when I put it, turned it around and put it in the chuck, the mortise had already warped so that it wasn't a perfect circle, which was a little bit of a bummer. Um, I kept the tailstock up as long as possible and just hoped that I got a good enough bite with um, what was touching. I don't know if you can see it, but I have on my official life member of the Woodturners Funnel Club shirt, which I got earlier this week. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to try really hard not to make any more funnels, but, you know, I'm going to embrace the ones that I have made. You can kind of see that it's already pretty wonky, so even doing the finishing process and trying to keep the pressure on it to melt the wax was um, a little bit tricky. So this is by far the biggest bowl that I've ever done. I forgot to measure what the final dimensions are, but this is a Laguna 18 inch swing. Um, so I'm guessing it's probably at least 13, um, 13 inches in diameter still. And because I didn't know exactly what's going to happen, um, I didn't bother doing anything to the bottom. I didn't sand it or anything. All I did was coat it in some shellac to see if I could keep it from cracking. And there she is, the big green monster. Here's hoping it stays intact. You can see it's already gone oval a little bit. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I really like to hear what you guys are thinking. Until next time, y'all be safe out there.